What's up y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things because it's the real things that get us deeper in relationship with each other and deeper in intimacy with God. Last week, you guys, I know that I talked a lot about learning how to be childlike and you'd think that a week later I'd be so much better at it because I knew what God was trying to teach me, right? Truth is, I'm still struggling. It's been a hard week and a great week, and there's been moments when I've been better at it and moments when I really suck at it. So I just wanna start off this message straight out of the gate by telling you, you don't need to be perfect as soon as you realize what the lesson is. Just understand that that's what God's teaching you and anything that you're being taught is gonna require a process. Oh, in fact, whether you like it or not, all of life is a process. Getting to a fitness goal is a process. Learning a new positive habit or getting rid of an old bad habit, that requires a process too. Walking by faith, not by sight, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Understanding who God is and who you are, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. So you guys, I've had a lot of people asking me like, how are you doing this purposefully homeless journey? Like, I want faith like that. You guys, I didn't always have faith like this. And sometimes I still don't because I'm learning too. So give yourself a break, give yourself some grace and understand that when you ask God to give you faith, it's gonna require a process to get there. When you ask God to teach you who he is and who you are, it's gonna require a process of learning and stepping out and feeling like you failed, which doesn't mean you're a failure. It simply means you're in process. So I'm gonna spend some time telling you guys where in the process I am, and hopefully that encourages you guys too. Like I said, this week has had its ups and downs, really, really, really big ups, like being able to do my live stream prayer call at Nike headquarters in Los Angeles while an event that I was attending was happening. I actually got to slip away and I had so much favor. It was incredible. And I got to jump back into the event as soon as I was done. So I feel like I got a whole bunch of birds with one stone just by attending that and saying yes to the commitment that I made to you guys and to God to do that prayer live stream. If you didn't know about that, I do that every Sunday on my Instagram channel from 6 to 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That time may change, but I will still do it on Sundays. So check out my Instagram for more info on that. Where was I? Okay, so where I am in my process right now is learning to daily, and this might sound redundant, but again, we're talking about process, right? It's learning to daily surrender to what God's plans are, to what God's timing is, and surrender what my plans and my timing preferences are. <laughs> like for me, I want a home like yesterday. I want some place to know that I'm coming home to every night and then be able to go out on mission, on assignment by God. I I wouldn't mind having a job that is consistent so I have consistent income to count on, but those things aren't happening and not for lack of trying or looking or putting myself out there. And a lot of you might not understand that, but the relationship I have with God right now is the most important thing and he has not given me the green light to pursue a typical job. For example, he hasn't provided a place to stay consistently long enough to get that job or to even set up what I'm doing on my own. That said, I know I do have kind of that green light or the release to begin working creatively on some ideas and some Cause Fitness rebranding. For those of you who don't know about that, Cause Fitness is the fitness business and brand that I've had since 2011. And I've been personal training and doing sports nutrition, sports modeling, and educating and teaching since 2007. But God put it on the shelf a year and a half ago to move me into this season of ministry. But enough about that. I want you guys to know that I just learned a lesson yesterday that was so clear to me that I know I'm entering into a new process or the process I'm in is shifting. Every time you get a new lesson, 
it's not the end, it's the beginning. So when you learn something new, when you get that revelation of either what you're going through, what you've been going through, what you're going to be going through, it's all the beginning of something, not the end. So the revelation I got last night, or the lesson I became aware of last night, is that when I panic or stress out about where I am in my process, in this journey, for example, I was driving to worship night with Gospel House last night in Los Angeles traffic, which was getting to me too. And I just yell prayed at God saying like, God, what do you want from me? What is the purpose in the Purposefully Homeless journey right now? Because you're stuck in traffic. I'm not serving anyone. I'm not doing anything that feels purposeful. And yet he uses everything, right? So I was just wondering like, God, I'm not just wondering, but like agitated. God, why don't I have a home yet? Like, why haven't you moved me into another season? Why do I have to keep wondering? Like, what is the point of that? And the thing is, he didn't give me an answer. But at Gospel House worship night last night, while Charlie, the leader of Gospel House, was teaching, he looked directly at me while he shared something with the whole group that spoke right to my heart. And he said, when you don't hear God, it's not because he's rejecting you. It's because he's redirecting you. And he went on to teach about different ways to hear from God. And I I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but God is always speaking. And people have told me that when you don't hear God, it's not God's problem, it's your problem. And I've internalized that. I've internalized that as, well, rejection. <laughs> so when he said, it's not rejection, it's redirection, everything was just crystal clear. So using that as an example, that revelation freed me to move into a new understanding of the journey that I'm in. And it may not be over in the sense that I want it to be over, but I can string together the lessons and the revelations that God has given me over the course of the last nine and a half months and more and use that to my advantage in my relationship with God, in my journey of faith, in my capacity to trust God, this is all incredibly helpful. So I want to encourage you that wherever you're at in your journey, whether it's a stay-at-home mom or to the other extreme that you are actually on a journey similar to mine, where you're trusting God for everything, you're fully depending on Him for your income, you're fully depending on Him for the food you eat, you're fully depending on Him for your shelter and clothing and places to stay, places to lay your head, safety, all of those things are things that I have to depend on God for. And I want to encourage you with this also. He always provides. I'm not just saying that because the Bible says it, even though that should be enough because the Bible is true. It's the ultimate absolute truth. It is the infallible word of God. But I'm not just saying that because the Bible says it. I'm saying it from experience on top of the fact that the Bible says it. God always provides. So wherever you are in your journey, I want to encourage you that it will always be a process, but that process includes these beautiful revelations along the path that make it when you have the right perspective, which is another conversation entirely, but that's really important. When you have the right perspective, it makes it more like a treasure hunt than something you don't want to go through. And I want to challenge you that in the hardest seasons, you remember that the Bible says that when we walk by the Spirit, we won't gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, I know I've mentioned this in past videos, but the battle that we face on a day-to-day -day basis has nothing to do with the people that surround us, the people we come in contact with, like the angry boss or the really annoying woman next door or your family member that you can't stand. Like our battle is not flesh, it's spirit. So the battles that you face, even the internal dialogue that you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis, the mental battles, it's all spiritual, you guys. The Bible says to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And it also says, like I just said, when we walk by the spirit, we do not gratify the desires of the flesh. And then it goes on to list the desires of the flesh and how we know. And they're pretty extreme examples, but it can be as small as struggling with depression with feelings of unworthiness and feeling forgotten, feeling alone, things like that. It can be as simple as just doubting God's goodness, 
lives. But the truth is, those are spiritual battles that can be won by remembering the truth of who God is. He's faithful. He is good, even when you don't feel like he is. Things like that. You replace the lie with the truth. How do you know the truth? You have to know the word. You've got to get in the word. You've got to read the Bible. And I'm not just talking about a Bible verse a day. I'm not talking about a five minute devotional that is one verse and then a couple paragraphs of some human's writing. I'm talking about getting in the word and getting the word in you. You have to guys. It is imperative. It is so, so, so important. It is life. It is the bread that your body needs more than food. In fact, last night I just heard a story of a guy who only eats a few times a year because he's tapped into something spiritual where the Bible has actually literally become his food. The Bible says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word of God. Okay. If the Bible is the word of God, you don't need food. And I don't want you guys to take me so literally that you go put yourself into a hospital because Rachel said, don't eat. That's not what I'm saying. This is an individual journey with God in relationship, in the spirit, by faith. <laughs> All I'm saying is that you need to know the truth because when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. I promise you that even the hard truth is in love. The hard truth, you're just bracing yourself against, you're putting up walls against. When you actually surrender and say, God, literally whatever you need to do, whatever you need to take away, whatever you need to add, do it because I trust you that you're doing it in love. When you can do that, you guys, there's nothing but freedom on the other side of that. I promise you. It might be hard to get there, but there's nothing but freedom on the other side. And I'm speaking from experience and I'm speaking from truth because the Bible says it and I love you guys and we're all in process. We're going to continue running this race together. We're going to do it faithfully and you're going to help me and I'm going to help you because we need community to get through this because that's what life is all about. It's it's about relationship vertically and then horizontally with God first and then with everybody else. Your relationship with God is the most important thing. If you have no other relationship on this earth, your soul desperately needs to get right with God. And literally all you have to do to get right with God is to accept that he gave his life for yours. So you surrender your life and you receive his. You admit that you can do nothing apart from him, that you only fail apart from him, that you accept his forgiveness for your imperfections, for your sin, and you receive his forgiveness, you receive his love, you receive that relationship. And there's this divine supernatural exchange that happens where you are no longer your old self. You become completely brand new. Like I used to be, <laughs> my before Christ, my BC days, I was a hot mess, you guys. I turned to everything but God to fulfill those needs in my mind and my heart. But when I turned to God, when I truly said, God, do whatever you want with my life, he set me free, you guys. And this, again, is a process of understanding and realizing your freedom, understanding and realizing what you've inherited because you've now become a child of God. And I'm gonna stop preaching because I get excited about this, but it's all about a new identity and realizing what the benefits of that identity are and embracing them and walking them out. So last week, I learned personally that one of my inheritances is, that's hard to say, it's being able to live in complete trust and dependence on God, which means I can be carefree and live childlike in that relationship, trusting that he's a good father and he's gonna provide for my every need and I do not have to stress about anything because striving is not the kingdom way. And this week, I'm learning that when I don't hear from God, it's not because he's rejected me, it's because he's redirected me. Same for you. That's not just a word for me, it's a word for everybody. So you guys, I love you so much. I want to hear how your journeys are going, whatever that looks like. I love to hear from you guys. Please consider joining me on my Patreon page. If you're already a Patreon family member, friend, family, thank you so much for your support. I really couldn't do this without you. This is one of the big ways that God provides for me for this journey. I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope you have a great week. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Share it with your friends and I will see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I want to know which animal on this pillow is your favorite.
ಟೌಸಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಐ 